So if you're looking for mediocre guitar content by a just barely sub-average player, if you want to get a chuckle or two, Geargasms is the channel for you. I promise we'll never let you down. It's kind of presenting itself to you. It's, it's acquiescing to your desire to play it instead of having to do a forced reach around. This is going to be the world's quickest unboxing because, quite frankly, unboxing videos are boring. I wouldn't even be doing this except all you pinheads under 30 expect to see some sort of an unboxing. I don't get it. I know how you millennials love the unboxings. Stop. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's fragile. Do not crush. Because you know those guys that ship boxes, if you don't have that sticker on there, they're going to go out of their way to crush it. They were punk rock. They were the real deal. Sid Vicious, their bass player, he stabbed his girlfriend to death before he later overdosed on heroin. And you can't get any more punk rock than that. Modern day punk bands, Green Day ain't never killed anybody. Have you seen him? It wasn't good. If four or more groupies came backstage to a Motley Crue show, they had to draw straws, and you know what happened to the girl that got the short one. It wasn't pretty. He was kind of hunched over even way back then, which sort of lent itself to a certain position backstage. At least the girl didn't have to look at him while it was going on. There's that. You might use this guitar clean. You might show up to your bluegrass jamboree this thing here you might want to like roll out some some twingle ding and ding and dang dang tie eye tippy tippy a tippy a on this some big guy comes up to you in a bar and you're playing this guitar and says you look like some kind of a homo playing that thing son you just turn it up and go <laughs> we don't make that face it was a little rapey that might not that might start a fight Let's pick another one here, Uncle Alan. Which is like the creepiest thing I could ever call myself. Because I don't really have any blood nieces or nephews. The camera adds 10 pounds, but unfortunately it didn't add 10 pounds right here where a guy could use it. It adds it here. Where no one likes it, really. But the key word is actively involved. Don't be that douchebag that just rolls into the group drops a video a couple of times a week, begs people to subscribe, and leave. The last guy maybe got overshadowed by a singer who may or may not have used a douche. Aww. But this next guy got overshadowed by a singer in his band who was a douche. I'm talking about Wes Borland, Limp Biscuit. First of all, what a stupid name for a band. If you're going to name your band Limp Biscuit, you better bring it. Now talk about being in a highly successful band with a douche for a lead singer. But Scott Stapp wasn't any ordinary douche. He was an Eddie Vedder copying, look at me, look at me, throw my arms out in Jesus poses kind of douche. Okay, once you're inside the box, you've gotten past all the paper and all the BS. you got one more condom to take off. What you will find here on Geargasms is an average guy with average chops, mediocre talent. Old man injures himself opening box, trying to get YouTube hits. Some would say that that is poetic justice. All rednecks, even if they hate heavy metal, if you think maybe somebody's going to whoop that ass because you're playing this pin guitar, you can always break out a little bit. <laughs> Hell yeah, Rednecks love them some Ozzy. A lot of people were afraid of this album, the album cover back then. I never was, and I think the main reason is is the robot monster looks kind of sad. Like, he did a horrible thing, and he, and he really enjoyed it while he was doing it, but now that he's seen the ramifications, it makes him kind of sad. Much like Jeffrey Dahmer must have felt the first time he killed a puppy. Geargasm's number of the week is nine. That's how many stab wounds Nancy Spongen had in her when Sid Vicious did all of this. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. I make shit up. Because this shot is way too damn high. It looks kind of stupid. Maybe you can get away with this. But again, 
You don't want to look like you're praying to Jesus when you're talking to people. You kind of that view from way, way below head level looking up at you, that's the view that Mrs. Geargasm sees every now and then. And you should probably ask her how much she likes looking at me from that angle. It's not pretty. The Wawa pedal and Kirk Hammett are synonymous with each other. Kirk overuses the Wawa pedal. The Wawa pedal overuses Kirk. Now, in addition to making the world's best fried chicken right here in America, down there in the Mexico, they also make the best crystal meth you've ever torched in your life. 99.7% pure, just a little bit blue. Oh, before I forget, the Ramones. There's nothing that says Christmas like the Ramones. I know you're confused by that, but don't be. Have you ever listened to any of their music? Ho, ho, ho. Let's go. Ho, ho. Let's go. You didn't know that song was about Christmas? Well, it is. Why didn't you know that song was about Christmas? Because you're stupid, man. And what I want you to walk away with is this thought of, hey, I'm at least as good as that guy. Why don't I have a YouTube channel? Your Gasm's number of the week is Ocho. That's the Spanish word for eight. Eight damn polyps in my damn last colonoscopy. They're in there a sawing and a cutting. I told the doctor, this ain't gonna be no magical mystery tour, son. You better get the scissors out, because I've done this a time or two. Geargasm's number of the week, 17. That's the title of one of Winger's very best songs from the 80s. And there's a lot to unpack there. But once you get everything all laid out on the bed and you really understand what that song is about and where it was going, really seriously fucking creepy. It didn't seem creepy for some reason in the 80s. I'm not sure why. We all knew what the song was about, but it seemed like it was a line. It's kind of borderline. Maybe it was okay to cross. She's almost legal, barely legal. Where is the needle? I don't know. In this day and age of porn hub, who knows? But apparently... Kip Winger had a sweet tooth. I'm not sure if that song was a confessional, but in most states, I guess 17 is okay. It depends on where you are relative to the Mason-Dixon line, I think, in large part. If that song came out a couple of years ago, Kip Winger would be on a plane to Lolita Island with Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Clinton and all kinds of other powerful people. The song would have been used as evidence in his trial. He would have been remanded to a jail cell where he would mysteriously commit suicide right after coming off suicide watch while the cameras were off and the guards were asleep. That's the major scale. You think YouTube owns that too? Somebody going to file a copyright claim? Maybe Julie Andrews or somebody from The Sound of Music. You can't play the major scale. That's doe a deer, a female flipping deer. Now, if you've ever downloaded anybody's patches for Van Halen on any platform where you can download tones, you'll know that there are so many stupid people out there that have no idea what Eddie Van Halen's tone sounds like. And it's just the biggest cesspool of all. Anytime I see a tone with brown in it, which is the legendary Eddie Van Halen brown sound, you can almost guarantee it's going to be brown all right, but not the kind of brown you're looking for. And not only that, the Rolling Stones are still out there. They're still kicking ass. They're over 100 by now. There hasn't been a Rolling Stones death in 40 years. Hard to believe. I put down on my HMO application that I am in fact a member of the Rolling Stones, and you wouldn't believe it. 40% discount on my rates right off the top. Why? Because insurance actuaries know that the guys in the Rolling Stones are never, ever going to die. Of course, we have Kurt Cobain on the window. You might think he looks a little bit forlorn, but I think he looks a little bit salty because not only was he about writing songs about depressing things, he could see into the future, and that's why he was so depressed. He could see that the Foo Fighters were going to sell way more records than Nirvana ever did. Me and a buddy, we'd read in the paper that Duran Duran's tour was pulling more screaming girls than anything that had ever been seen since the Beatles, so we knew we had to go. Here was our miscalculation. We were 19, 20 years old. We show up to this concert, and the girls are all 13 and 14. It was no bueno, because if you're not here, I'm just farting in the wind. Nobody smells it. What good is that? We also learned that roses are red, 
Violets are blue. And Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself.